A uh, quick disclaimer, if you saw the title of this YouTube video and you're like, oh, this would be a really scientific, mathematical exploration of what prints work and don't work, uh, that's not what this video is, uh, because that's not who I am. Uh, I, I basically just wanted to print some stuff that I was curious about and uh, show it to you and decide whether it works or not or whether I like it or not. So a lot of this is subjective, a lot of this is taste. That's kind of how a lot of your print work and art should be anyway. There's no one right way in this photography world. There's many different ways. What's up? So I'm driving right now to my printer in Chattanooga, Tennessee to answer a question I've had uh, recently. So I've never really printed a ton of my film work. You know, I've printed memories, uh, printed small, you know, like eight by 10, four by six, that kind of thing. But I've never really printed my film photos as art. I'm very used to printing my photos large, which is why the past few years I've spent so much time using a high megapixel digital DSLR. But when I shoot 35 millimeter, I don't feel like I have the option available to print a you know, 30 by 40 or 60 by 40 even. And so I wanna answer the question, how big can I print my 35 millimeter negatives. So I don't do darkroom printing, I print here, uh, which is uh, the printer, all my prints get done. So I send them the scans. I don't have space for an enlarger and all that stuff. Done enlarger printing, you know, I've got these big, nice high-res scans. I'd rather just send it here, tweak them, make them look good. So that's why I'm here right now. Okay, so I've got an image that I've picked out to test. It's a simple shot of the spot on the lake that I shoot all the time that I mentioned in the last video shot on Cinestill 400D. So to start, I thought I would do like an eight by 10. I'm using matte photo paper that I always use. Matte texture is always gonna end up revealing more in a print because you don't have that gloss to distract or hide from any low resness or imperfections. I've also printed out a 20 by 16 and two different 24 by 36s and I'll tell you why in a second. Sorry for the noise in here first off, it's just I'm in a print shop right now, there's stuff happening. It just is what it is. So let's start with the eight by 10. Well, the eight by 10, I think looks perfect. I mean, I, I think this print looks really good. Um, I like uh, how sharp it looks at eight by 10. Yeah, it just looks nice. It looks like it's, it's of appropriate print size for sure. Um, not much to say about that. Uh, I love matte paper just because it's not distracting. It looks super clean. I would sell that to anybody on my website. Uh, then a 16 by 20. This is kind of interesting. So 16 by 20, if you look at it super close, the details start to fall apart. But if you hang it on a wall, I think it holds up okay. Like you're gonna hang it on a wall, you're not gonna notice the difference. But you know, next to the eight by 10, I do notice some sharpness differences. So for sure, it's not holding up as well. Uh, and I use this print, I use this photo in particular because it's got decent light. It's got a lot of little details and stuff. Um, and, and I'm in this ongoing battle with uh, Cinestill 400D trying to like understand how it works because my results with it haven't always been super consistent. Um, and I think that may be scanning issue, user error, I don't know. But uh, I like this shot on 400D. I think it works pretty well. Okay, so why did I do two 24 by 30s? Well, uh, because for one of them, I used Topaz Gigapixel AI. Uh, which is a tool to replace missing data and be able to help you blow up an image, up the resolution, that kind of thing. And it works okay for some images, doesn't work for others. Like if you got a big crowd of people, it's gonna mess up all their faces, all that kind of stuff. But for this photo, I was like, you know, I've always wanted to know like what the difference would be. So I printed one of these 24 by 30s without using Gigapixel, just straight up in Photoshop, just sized it up, printed it, and then I did one in Gigapixel. This is the Gigapixel one. This is the not Gigapixel one. And most of the differences you're gonna see are like in the trees, right? And I don't even know if you'll be able to see them on camera, 
Let's pick a spot and see if we can. Okay, so here's this spot right here. This is the gigapixel one. Here's the same spot right here, non-gigapixel. Non-gigapixel, non-gigapixel, gigapixel. Okay, so I think overall, the difference between the gigapixel one and the non-gigapixel one, pretty negligible. Um, and I'm actually quite surprised by the amount of detail I'm able to get out of these 24 by 30 prints. And it kind of, it's encouraging to know that, you know, I can shoot 35 millimeter and I have the latitude I have in a print. But again, that depends fully how much grain you're cool with, whatever. What if I printed a more abstract image on like the grainiest film stock at like a much bigger size? What would that end up being like? So, so I printed this, uh, which is on brushed aluminum. It's one of the multi-location double exposures I talked about in a couple videos ago. And I shot it on Kentmere 400, which is like a crazy grainy film. I kind of love how grainy it is, but it, this shot was like, is so grainy. Basically, I shot photos of the woods in South Carolina, then shot photo of New York uh, using my Nikon L35AF, 35 millimeter film. Kenmere 400 and I printed it uh, pretty close to 40 by 30. The aspect ratio didn't quite work out for 40 by 30, but this is uh, basically 40 by 26 or something like that. Print quality is really about preference. I've seen videos on YouTube about how far you can take a 24 megapixel image. And in that video's opinion, it was like 24 by 30 max or maybe smaller than that. But I've printed 20 megapixel drone images, 60 by 40 that look really good. So there are a lot of factors to take into account when printing photos bigger than you would think. So first I would ask, what is the subject of the image? If you're printing a more accurately depicted landscape, you're gonna notice a loss in sharpness as you blow it up. However, if your image is more abstract, like a double exposure, you're not looking for sharpness as much. In fact, the loss of quality may help make it more painterly looking in some ways. Two, I would ask what print material are you using? Like I said before, glossy prints can hide some imperfections because the gloss is distracting. Canvas is a great material to print with because the texture of canvas hides a lot of the noise in an image. So you can get away with a little bit more with a canvas. Brushed aluminum, which is my favorite material, is something I love printing on because it has shine and texture and you can really push an image on a material like that. Got it hung up. Man, I think that looks cool. Yeah, because far away, you don't, you know, see the grittiness, get close up, which I won't because it's huge and it's, you know, above my couch. So I would say printing a 35 millimeter negative, 40 inches across and almost 30 inches this way works. So there you go. You can do it, especially on brushed aluminum. Number three. What is the viewing distance? The bigger the image, the farther away you're gonna stand. Photographers always like to inspect their images super close up, especially when they're you know, at the print shop and they're like, oh, I wanna see all the detail in the thing. But no one looks at prints like that. People will get close to an eight by 10 or even a 16 by 20, but they'll be standing a farther distance away looking at a 40 by 30 image, for instance. Billboards aren't usually photographed with large format phase one cameras or Hasselblads. They're just regular JPEGs blown up. I'm sure they wouldn't look super great if you're standing two feet away, but you're seeing them from the interstate super far away. And then number four, I would say, how are you editing the image? There's a lot of things we can do in editing to make a scan or image look better for print. There are even more great software tools out there now that can help replace missing data using AI so we can stretch our prints a little farther. We can sharpen, remove noise, all that stuff. So what's my conclusion? I think this shot of the Okoe held up decently well. It's grainy and crunchy to begin with because it's the 35 millimeter negative, but with abstract double exposure, I'd be willing to go bigger on a crazy material like brushed aluminum for some added dimension. Photographers are a little too rigid on printing in my opinion. We tend to be picky and perfectionist about stuff like this, especially when it comes to our own work. But if you hang out on photography YouTube too much or just with the photography community in general, you'd get the impression that you can only print on like Hanamule paper or glossy Epson stock of some kind, when in reality, 
reality, there's so many more materials and options out there that can take our photography to some crazy levels we didn't even consider. Thanks for checking out this video. Subscribe if you wanna see more, and you can follow me on Instagram, at Will Malone.